We have most of the original shipment emerge or close. We have all these empty chrysalis here that are already emerged. And just this morning, we had this Julia emerge right here, drying its wings still. I don't want to touch it because its wings are still really fragile, and it's the same sort of thought process that we have in the pavilion. We don't want to touch the wings because you'll pull a lot of those scales off. So Lepidoptera means scaly wings, moths and butterflies. They both have wings that are covered in scales and they both have this fancy proboscis as their mouth parts. When we're talking about moths and butterflies, we're talking about one group. We're talking about this order of insects called Lepidoptera. So it's a huge order. It's got something like 150,000 species. And most of these are critters that we would call moths. So butterflies are just one small branch of this giant tree of life. Uh, that includes both moths and butterflies. Butterflies, you could think of as sort of the fancy day active version of moths. And one of the differences in this branch of the, the moth tree is how they pupate. So how they look when they transition from larva to adult. With butterflies, they have a naked pupa, so they're not inside of a cocoon, and they're usually suspended, usually from a tree branch. But if you're looking at the adult stage, butterflies have these clubs on the ends of their antennae, so something like a bulge on the end of the antenna. Now moths can have lots of different types of antennae, but butterflies are pretty consistent in having a club, and moths are pretty consistent in not having this club. I'm Matt Gimmel. I'm the curator of entomology here at the Santa Barbara Museum of Natural History. So I'm responsible for the vast collection of insects that we have here. We have about 300,000 prepared specimens. Uh, I also do research on mostly beetles, and I focus on their taxonomy, so figuring out how they're related, uh, figuring out whether we have new species, and figuring out how to identify them. But during butterfly season, I put on my butterfly hat. That was goofy. Pupae don't poo. So they can exist sometimes for several months if they're overwintering, but under normal conditions, they'll be a pupa for, let's say, 10 to 12 days. During this time, there's a lot of metabolic things that are happening inside their bodies, and there are waste products. Almost as soon as the pupa splits open, it gets rid of some of this waste product, this poo, uh, which we call meconium. Plainly seen here. This is why we have these paper towels at the bottom of the chamber. So as we look at all of this waste product at the bottom of the chamber, it's important to know, even though it's red, this is not blood. This is poo and other waste products that are coming out of the pupa uh, when the butterfly emerges. This is pretty unusual how clean this is, because if you look up, you'll see all of this meconium, this red fluid all over the bars here. And the meconium is like waste, it's like poop. And you see some here from the butterfly that just emerged down here. The difference is between this one and uh, hemolymph, which is the butterfly blood. Um, this is red, and hemolymph is like yellow or green. The red spots are pretty normal. 